you who is here today, if you feel like watching it again, because you missed something, then you can watch it. So we are recording. So Dianta, could you do us the honor of introducing yourself, who you are, and what is it that you do? Yes, of course. Well, my name is Dianta. I am 36 years old, turning 37 this year. I am a mother of a son, and I am a holistic therapist, a Reiki master, and I do also plant medicine ceremonies, womb healing ceremonies, uh, retreats in Holland and also abroad. And well, to start this off, endometriosis, of course, it is Endometriosis Awareness Month, and it was important for us to share as much information as possible about endometriosis. So the masterclass, definitely uh, a go-to, a need to watch. Um, I was diagnosed with endometriosis in 2009, the end of 2009. And I had my first surgery in 2010, right after that, a few months after that. Um, I've always had menstrual pain from the moment I had my period, my first period of when I was 12 years old. So I went to the, the doctor with, with the, the problems that I had, the pain and nausea, and they gave me the birth control pill to um, ease the symptoms. And I thought it was the only thing that was possible to take. So I took that for years and years and years. So when I was diagnosed with endometriosis, that was in my early 20s. So all those years in between, I was walking around with the pain, trying to cope with everything that was going on inside my body. And so one moment that I couldn't even walk anymore and I had uh, a lot of uh, pain in my stomach. You could see it as like uh, a square from under my breast up until uh, my uh, lower stomach. And it was like a plate. So every time that I was moving, the pain was moving with me. So um, I went to a hospital, they, they, they did a water sonogram and they saw it within 20 minutes. Mind you that I already was going to another hosp hospital They didn't see anything. I had multiple uh, sonograms too. They didn't discover any problems at all. So at one point when they did discover it, they made uh, the steps because we also had a, a, a wish for a child and because we didn't get pregnant, we knew something was going on. The years before that, I had only the birth control pills and painkillers. I had to, during my period, always have painkillers with me. Otherwise, I wouldn't survive the day at all. I wouldn't be able to go to work, um, see friends or family, do nothing. So um, that was the start of a very long journey, hearing that it was a chronic disease, that I had to carry it for the rest of my life, um, that I wasn't able to uh, become pregnant uh, in the normal way, conceive in the normal way. So um, what I did together with the help of my uh, parents, I looked at a, a holistic approach together with the Western medicine approach. My mom always taught me that, you know, this is what, what's going on right now here, but we also have um, our roots and we need to do what we can do for you to help you with our knowledge that we have. So um, I have um, roots from Suriname in South America, country in South America. My mom and dad sent me there and there I began with the, 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 the bathing with, with plants, uh, herbs from the jungle, the Amazon jungle. And uh, that really helped me to go deeper into my own healing. It was actually the jump start of the whole healing that I did. Okay, coming back uh, to Holland, I went to, um, I also got a hormone called Lucrine that put me into menopause. When you have endometriosis, the problems grow every time you have your monthly. So being in my menopause um, for six months gave me the time to rest, not feel the pain, and to really go deeper into what was going on. Um, of course, I had um, other symptoms with being in menopause. Um, so uh, thrills, hot flashes, um, not being able to sleep. 
um, really heavy bloating feelings and things like that. So when I came back from Suriname, we started an IVF um, track and then I was pregnant after one month with no problems during my pregnancy. So after the pregnancy, after I uh, delivered, um, man, my son was born. Six months after that, I started getting the same symptoms again. So the pain, nausea, everything started all over. So at that point, I was looking at, okay, the hospital was not able to help me anymore because I kept on going back for uh, the surgeries to remove the adhesions, the cysts that were growing inside of me. And it became so familiar. At that point, I already had three surgeries that um, I saw it as being normal, that it was a regular thing. Uh, at one point, I decided to do my own research. What is endometriosis really about? What are the things that, you know, not necessarily Holland knows about endometriosis, but let me see what the states are doing with endometriosis and other countries are doing with endometriosis. Maybe they are further in their research. And um, doing that research, I came across the endometriosis diet. I talked with my uh, OBGYN about it, and she didn't know anything about the link between the foods that we eat and endometriosis. So following the endometriosis diet, I realized that I had less symptoms um, during my period, and I was really surprised by it. I mean, I started doing small things, leaving sugar out of my diet, um, e not eating as much wheat. Uh, more vegetables, more uh, fruits, a lot of water drinking, two liters a day, and it really helps. Then I started to, you know, to work out, really take care of, of, about, of myself. And at one point, um, I switched hospitals too, because the, the approach that the first hospital had that I went to for years, at one point, they couldn't help me anymore. My body was literally rejecting the hormones. So the hormones that I needed to take, the birth control pills, I had bleeding, um, bleedings uh, between those pills. So it came through. At that point, I was spiritual at a, a level spiritually that I could really listen to uh, my body. So I was thinking if the bleeding is coming through the birth control pills and the other hormones, that means that my body is trying to tell me something. Um, I looked up at, at different hospitals that had, uh, that were specialized in endometriosis. And I found, I had three hospitals that I wanted to look deeper at. From those three hospitals, I chose one hospital. Uh, the reason why is because they had a holistic approach together with the Western medicine. They knew about the endometriosis diet. They were advising it to the patients. Not only that, they also had um, um, physiotherapists and uh, uh, psychiatrists that were linked to the endometriosis department. This hospital had a whole department focused on endometriosis. So I went there uh, together with my mom and the, the first uh, meeting with uh, the OBGYN, it was so deep. He got me right away. He knew exactly what was going on. Uh, he was really hands-on, really connected. And he was like, we're gonna do this. So it was a really warm, warm welcome. And I really felt uh, acknowledged and heard uh, by them right away. Um, so I had one surgery at that hospital. In the meantime, I was um, doing my own work. So really, uh, approaching the holistic side, mentally, emotionally, but also spiritually, energetically. So tuning in, praying, meditating, um, what am I eating? Why am I eating these things? Uh, writing, I started to write a lot of poems and uh, quotes. So really everything that I was going through or went through, uh, what I was feeling, I started to write it down. So I was really, you know, healing and releasing the things that were inside of me. Uh, the last surgery was uh, one of the biggest surgery, was the biggest surgery that I had. They removed seven centimeters from my intestines. Um, they had, uh, they found a chocolate cyst inside of my fallopian tube. Uh, that was blocking it. 
uh, they removed adhesions from um, around my womb and outside of the womb. And um, that, that was it. So they removed as much as they could. After the surgery, I woke up and I felt so drained, so tired. And I was like, this is the last time that I'm going to go through this. I am not going to do it anymore. And um, I need to really look at what I can do internally. At that moment, I was already studying for a holistic therapist. And then the last, the hospital before that, I had one moment that I was uh, in one of the rooms and I had so much pain and I didn't know what to do with me. And then I made a promise to myself that when I get better, I am going to share, try to help as many women as possible that have the same problem. So during school, I, as studying as a holistic therapist, having my Reiki one, two and Reiki master, I was like, okay, I have to practice what I'm preaching. I can't help other people if I can't help myself. So me first, I use everything that I know, knew and everything that I learned on myself. So we went healing on another level. What's going on in my mind mentally? What's going on emotionally? Where am my body? Am I holding on to those emotions? And how is my body trying to respond to me? Um, not only that, looking at ancestral connections. So my mother never had menstrual pains and her uh, mother didn't either, but there was somewhere in my ancestral line that there indeed was a connection with my womb problems that I had. Um, I started looking up at Dr. Sebi, his list, and I tried to use that for myself. I actually have these herbs here for you guys. So burdock root and um, dandelion, sarsaparilla, and there's one herb on his list that I actually grew up with. I was um, given this at an early age because I had problems with eating and in my intestines with pain from a very young age when I was like four years old. And my parents being from Suriname, they were um, um, brought up with this too. You guys can see it? This is called uh, quasi bitter, bitter wood. Okay. This is on Dr. Sibi's list too. So mind you that my, my, I grew up with this and we lost track of it. I didn't drink it anymore. And then during my healing, it came back. Yeah, well, I'm so amazed. I'm going to um, interject a little bit because sure. this is so magical. Like everything you're sh sharing right now, I'm trying, people are trying mm -hmm. to come in. Let me admit okay. that everything you're sharing is so magical. I was like listening and... I was like, oh my God, like this is gold because so much resonates with me. Please mm -hmm. meet you, ladies. Because I don't have endometriosis, but I suffer from fibroids. And this is something that I've shared in the past as well. But I have gone through a similar journey. Luckily, I did not have to uh, go through uh, surgery. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was advised if I wanted to have kids to start as soon as I could. Yes. Uh, I was only 24 when I was diagnosed. So I had no plans of getting pregnant then. And I didn't even have a partner at that time. Mm -hmm. So it was like, what are you telling me? Like get pregnant. Yeah. Like I just go out and get pregnant. But what I like about your story that you're telling is that that's why bless our parents, bless our mothers, you know, yes. mothers. Yes. Uh, my mother was also the one who advised me to go the holistic route. So I moved to Ghana in 2013 after being born mm. in Europe and have only been there once or twice on holiday. Oh. And my mom is someone who's into herbal remedies and holistic therapies. She's into that. And she was like, why not try this? And I also, when I went to Ghana, I detoxed from um, anticonceptive, contraceptive, you know, because I was on the pill for years because I had migraine issues growing up. Mm -hmm. yes. My skin is in the family, you know, my mom had migraines. Um, a lot of people, my cousins uh, suffer from that as well. So for my migraines, I was on, on the pill from a very um, early age, actually, and mm -hmm. I decided to move to Ghana. I was like, I'm done with this. I yeah. just want detox. I don't have anyone here. I, you know, whatever. We'll just see how it happens. 
Mm -hmm. and also that you know I, I went vegetarian for about a year and a half or two years when I lived in Ghana um, I did this herbal treatment where I would do bee steaming and sit yeah. in bath. Yes, yes. Bath, sitting. We have the same thing. Yes, like that. So a lot of what you're saying resonates with me. But it's funny how yeah. all of this yeah. has always existed, but yeah. we shy away from them. We're like, exactly. Mm, so these things don't work. Blah blah blah. And it worked for me because I was. I'm a living proof of someone who was told that I was going to have miscarriages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but I got pregnant in the, on the first trial. There we go. <laughs> and I've been getting pregnant easily. Yes. <laughs> As you know, yes. I have it, so there's no issue. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there's no issues there, but I was told repeatedly that I would probably have miscarriages at least yeah. three. They were yeah. very specific and that I had to be fast if I wanted to get pregnant. Yes. Um, so I love that you're sharing how, you know, you tried the, 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 the Western medicine, but you were like, I need to find a way. There has to be a way for this. And I also love how you talked about how it's a little bit of a, a lifestyle disease in a way, because we don't like hearing that, but it's a lifestyle mm. disease. It you definitely know, is. You talked about how food and the things we eat have an impact on that. And, and you know, how I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer oh. of that as well. And we have one of our ladies... Vanessa, who's also a holistic health therapist from Guadeloupe, who shared oh, about how, you know, our hormonal, um, you know, as a, as women, a lot of the things we eat make things worse, such as you mentioned sugar and all of that. So, you know, we keep going around in circles, but unless we are willing to do the work, you know, cut down on the things we're told to cut down on and start doing, you know, exercise. We all know it's good for us. Drinking water. We all know it's good for us, but we don't. Exactly make the link you know we don't, don't make the link we don't, we don't make the link yeah Go ahead. and that's what i also feel with the womb i i say it to everyone uh our wombs uh she's not trying to punish us or hurt us she's trying to get our attention get back to those basics to you know just like you said what, what your mother did and what my mother did go back to the roots we all originate from Africa. That's where everything begins. And if you go back to, you know, the basics, nature that that that, that nature gives us, so the plants and um, the the fruits, you know, I started with the endometriosis diet back then, and now I don't even eat tomatoes or onions anymore because you keep on leveling up and growing spiritually and you are also guided on a whole other level so your body is going to tell you exactly what is good for your body or what not so i always advise people just start with nature's own and then from there listen really listen to your body communicate with your body not only that your womb is going to tell you what foods are good for you or not what what partner is good for you or not if you need to get your rest, if you need to meditate, really connect with the womb. We are living in a society where everything is done from here. You know, you 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 are born. You get conditioning on 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 top of you. Uh, you are prepared for school and everything after that to go to work after school. Where is the connection inside your emotions, your womb area, your stomach area? Really go inward. Not only that. I really had to look, take a deep look at myself in the mirror. What are the own blockages that I'm carrying? Am I ready to take it to the next level? And that means that when you look at yourself in the mirror, let everything come out that needs to come out. If you feel that crying, those tears, let it come out. If you feel laughter, let it out. Can you really look at yourself in the mirror? Start from there. And I had to learn, you know, I was brought up in a loving family. My parents were always there for me, my brother and sisters too, but I never really learned what self-love was. So what does self-love mean for you? How do you, you know, really take care on that nurture, on a nurturing way for yourself? Um, so self-care, taking your rest, your boundaries, what do you um, uh, actually, you know, what is the energy that you're holding? What are you attracting? Because everything is energy. So even when you think that everything just keeps on going, just like endometriosis, it keeps coming back. What is it trying to tell me? Not, oh, it's happening again. This is my life. 
it's terrible. I just have to take it as it is. No, you can be the owner of your own body, mind, and soul. And yes, we have professionals that help us, but they can only help us up to a certain degree. The next step is to go inside and connect with your mind, body, and soul on that level. So the last uh, sonogram that I had, my womb, I never saw her at ease at all. She was no adhesions, no cease. She was so quiet. My OBGYN and her assistant, they were flabbergasted. And I just looked at the, 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 the screen and I was just smiling. I was just smiling. I was like, yes, let's go. So within a month after that, I officially started root holistic therapy. Mm -hmm. From there on, it went like this, boom, 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 boom. So you are being guided and protected into your journey, but you really have to accept it and do the work. Yeah. No shortcuts. No shortcuts. So, Thank you so much. I want to uh, go back a little bit because you had surgery. Um, because with um, endometriosis, there isn't really, as they say, there isn't really a specific cure. So sure. there's things mm -hmm. you can do to treat the symptoms, or mm. you can you can get rid of the tissue, or, you know, of the you know, yeah. Mass. But uh, the, the fear or the issue is it it can come back and it does come back in many cases, just as fibroids do, and that's yes. sometimes they is the last resort because when they take away, sometimes they can take away and cause damage. And that's why if you want to have kids, they advise you to at least start to have kids before they do that. I know yes. that you chose the, um, and I'm using the words chose, even though it's not a choice, but you chose the, uh, the way of surgery. Would you yeah. have done the surgery if you knew what you know now? If it wasn't if it wasn't necessary, I wouldn't have. But because I had a lot of pain, I mean, the adhesions were growing on my intestines. Mm -hmm. So if I had done the 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 the, the teas and the diet uh, earlier, mm -hmm. it might have helped with removing those problems inside of me. Mm -hmm. But think about the chocolate seeds that was inside of my fallopian tube. You have to really think about okay, would it have been would it have been possible to remove that holistically? Mm -hmm. You know, because it was it came in there, yeah. but it can't get out, so it's stuck. Mm -hmm. And I was actually a candidate to have my uh, uterus removed because I had stage four endometriosis, mm -hmm. and because I was so young, they said we're not going to do it yet because you know you still want to have children and everything, but. When you give me the okay, we're going to do it. I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And the last surgery that I just talked about, the lady next to me, she was younger than me and having her uh, uterus removed wow. because she was so tired and fed up and she didn't want to have it anymore. It was, she was done. Mm -hmm. So taking the holistic approach really freed me. Mm -hmm. And that's why I guess prevention, we always say prevention, prevention is key, but it is definitely key. If we can change and adapt our lifestyles early yes. on, we can, we can avoid having bigger issues in the future. Are we going to have them? Perhaps, yeah. but it's not going to be as bad. Um, so um, ladies who are here, if you have any questions, I don't know if any of you specifically are suffering with this chronic condition. If you are and you have questions, feel free to leave it in the chat. I will be looking through um, um, even, you know, from time to time to also ask the answer. If you prefer to speak and you want to unmute yourself, um, you know, give us a shout out and, you know, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and ask the question. I want to ask you, you know, maybe a few things because we did talk about how it's a lifestyle um, condition as well, or it gets worse with the lifestyle. It can get better with a lifestyle change. Could you maybe give us a few tips on how we can, you know, we can work on our, on ourselves, whether we have endometriosis or whether we're trying to at least take care of our, our wounds better and of ourselves in general. Yes. doesn't matter what the disease is. Uh, what I always say to uh, my clients and even friends and family, just start with the basics and even things that are free journaling. So I really started writing and just uh, because I did, because of all of the, the problems that I had because of endometriosis, um, I also had, uh, I was also depressed. I was stuck, I didn't know what to do. So when I was uh, journaling, it really gave me a sense of relief. 
So that is one thing. I also started to do meditation. So really going inward and finding peace inside of myself. And there are a lot of meditations that you can follow on YouTube that are free or even, you know, um, on Spotify, let's say, or anything else. And there are meditations for five minutes, meditation for 30 minutes, and even sleep meditation. So even if you are busy during the day, you don't have the time to really uh, get your rest. You can do a sleep meditation and your subconscious mind really takes over, you know, if it's a higher Hertz frequency, which really resonates with your body or like affirmations. And you have to find uh, meditations about anything, self-love, love, love um, releasing pain, releasing fear, releasing anger, um, morning meditations, evening meditations. Just go at what you feel at that moment. Um, of course, the foods, nature's own, um, as, as less sugar as possible. I also started eating, I grew up eating meat and fish. And um, when I was used, following the endometriosis diet from the first day, I uh, began eating lighter uh, meat. So only chicken, um, um, turkey, but, uh, for example, uh, and also the lighter fishes. And then uh, up until I don't eat any um, anything that comes from an animal. I don't eat that anymore. My body literally rejects it. So um, those are the things that you can start with. And also prayer. Words have power. And um, prayer really helped me to connect with, with myself. I also took my child into that whole cycle, guys. So really try to connect with your family while doing this. And I also saw when, when these things worked for me, I changed. Not only that, my, 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 my household changed with me. Mm-hmm. So it was it was like a team effort. Yeah. And it, that's really beautiful to do it. You're not you don't have to do it alone. You don't have to do it alone. You are not alone. Yeah. There's a question in the chat about if you could talk a little bit about the endometriosis diet that you've mentioned a couple of times. Could you give us a little bit of a, yeah. an insight into that? Definitely. So the diet consists of um, eating as clean as possible. Uh, the first diet that I followed was no wheat. So I started looking at buckwheat um, um, or um, chickpea, uh, spelt. Uh, so I replaced the breads that I ate before with that. Um, a lot of greens. So um, uh, salads, um, other kind of vegetables, uh, fruits, um, a lot of water. And the the if you still eat meat, let, not the heavy ones, so no no pork, uh, bread meats, no go, no alcohol, no sugar. Everything is white. Everything that's white, leave it alone. So no white bread, um, uh, no flour, and that really gave me a piece of my. Not only that, no dairy, so no cheese and no milk. Actually, when I was still drinking milk, I really had a problem with my intestine. I had to go to the bathroom within an hour. So that was one of the first things that I let alone no dairy uh, products. So it was really um, a big change for me. It was difficult because I I had people around me that were still eating all of those things. So it takes a lot of uh, perseverance to keep that going. Um, Well, up until today, you know, you have to think, how do you feel after you eat something? Exactly. And then you know if you're going to take, you know, it's going to be the right choice for you to eat it or not. Yeah. And that's an exercise that I do in, in often with my clients when I do the group coaching or even we've had, um, as I said, one of our colleagues um, who's a holistic health therapist as well. Mm-hmm. We'll take the time to kind of notice how they feel when they're hungry or after they eat. Like, how do I feel like no one asked themselves that question? But if we yes. were and we listened, we would know the answer to many things. Um, and 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 it must have been it's very hard because the things you're mentioning these are things that we eat on a daily basis oh and yes <laughs> in the Netherlands, so when you say no dairy i'm like whoa <laughs> As, especially with the cheese yeah <laughs> you know, no dairy that's like hello yeah. that's all you know people we eat in holland so yes I know that it, it wasn't easy and also you talked about sugar sugar is in everything literally everything yeah, so everything. Hard, I guess you can't do everything at once, but start no. by little, start step by little step, yeah, thing at a time, and see how your body uh, reacts to it. But it's really it's hard, and that's why we don't want to do the work. But 
it's either that or you know drastic yeah. measures you know so exactly really drastic sort of surgeries and living in pain because um the sugar was one of the things because you know being a holistic therapist and learning how uh disease um how I always use this, when I dived into that self-love, I found out, you know, by doing research and, you know, studying in my books, it really says that sugar replaces love. So when you have that in your mind and you start really to put that love, that attention for love and other things yourself, instead of food, guys, things are going to shift. Because you want to feel that that warmth and comfort, you know, emotional eating, it does a lot. And your, your, your body so you know, you have to go inside. It starts from within. You don't have to for, look for love outside of yourself. It starts from within. So um, endometriosis is really linked to, you know, replacing love with sugar. So that was really an eye opening for me during, you know, during school and um, a lot of, um, spiritual people always they, they share so much information with regard to other diseases and how we are replacing things or what our body is trying to sell us with a specific disease exactly exactly and i think also with cravings as they say when you have certain cravings most of the time you're lacking something but you're yes towards the the bad version of it so it's, it's yes all, it's funny how at the end of the day the advice is the same for many things you know stress is at the root of a lot of things definitely emotional blockages you know so yes working on yourself that, ooh, girl she <laughs> <laughs> during the meditation it seems for people they're like oh it's always people are always reverting to these tips but because they work <laughs> they work they work and there are there are a lot of people before me that have you know done the same thing and a lot of people um that ha that have books out you can buy books and all of this information is inside of it. And that's how my journey began. I was looking, okay, what do people know about endometriosis? And not only Western health, everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a nice uh, transition to maybe tell us a little bit about, you know, your journey with holistic therapy, because your personal, you know, your interest was parked because of your own experience, you know, dealing with pain, chronic pain, and you're like, I need to do something. And also with your thanks to your roots coming from Suriname and your mother being, you know, um, attached to her roots and what, wanting to maybe see if there was an other option and you being open for it to try it out. Yes. It led you to be more interested into, you know, and you said you made a promise to yourself when you had your last surgery that, you know, I need to share this and help as many women as possible with it. So tell us about how you, mm -hmm. you know, you started that journey and, and, and um, mm -hmm. yeah. How do you want to help women? Um, yeah. You know, well, the, the plus point that I had with um, my journey is that because I was studying to become a holistic therapist, we had a lot of mo moments at school where we had to practice on one another. So I remember one particular um, uh, uh, school day, we were practicing with the inner child. And... Um, I was like, oh, there shouldn't be anything there. You know, I had a good youth and I had no problems and, you know, I enjoyed everything. So when my, um, when a fellow student was practicing on me, in a child, <laughs> I have to take a, my throat, sorry. She was practicing on me with the inner child and a lot came out, tears. I was like, wow, what is this? And it went deep, guys. <coughs> Excuse me. I felt an energy in my stomach area coming up. And keep in mind that I had a beautiful youth up until I was 12 years old. And then I started to feel pain, experience pain. Before that, I didn't know what pain was knowingly. So then you are 12 years old. You just got your period. And then your world changes. You have to prepare for pain every time in a month. <clears throat> what happens with your child? She gets stuck. She's not able to enjoy the, the, those last years of her youth before she becomes a teenager. 
and holistically, so spiritually, your inner child stays stuck in your womb area. Your inner, your 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 chakras, for instance, they grow with you. When you grow, teenager, adult, etc., it grows with you. But when you are stuck with pain in your womb, uh, that's where your inner child resides. She can't feel love. She can't go up to the heart chakra. She can't go up further, further, further. So her development stops. So what came out during that session is that whole inner child and the pain that the inner child felt from 12 years up until, you know, a later age, not being able to experience, you know, that warmth and love inside of her. Wow. So that was, a, yeah, that was an eye opener. And that was only one day of school, guys. I'm telling you, practicing a school really opened up a lot. It brought me to past lives. Mm-hmm. It brought me to um, a sound healing that really helped and you know this is I had school before that so I went back to school when I was an adult and um, when I was working so I did it next to my job and this was one study that oh I couldn't wait for the next school day because there was always something coming out always Mm -hmm. we are never done with healing we heal until we're journeying on you just have to know which tools you can use for your healing journey and not heal from pain anymore, not learn from pain anymore, but start to to learn and heal from a place of love for yourself. I love when you talked about the inner child because, you know, I had my first menstruation at the age of eight. Mm-hmm. Wow. That was super early. Uh, I think I yeah. was the first one in my at school, probably in my class. Mm-hmm. As you were talking, it reminded me of how I felt when, you know, we had gym classes or we had to go swimming. Yes. I had to go swimming, but, uh, you know, I had to say that I can't go swimming and I had to write a little note because my mom could not. So yeah. I had to write to tell the teacher that I was ill and I couldn't swim. And, you know, I was just a child. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm, I can only imagine the, the pain and the trauma that it has caused inside of me that I'm not even aware of. And exactly. the thing is, there's so much happening on your subconscious level that mm-hmm. where until it's tapped by certain energies. And that's exactly. the work that you do and that is out there. It's so important. And yeah, so please go on and tell us more about the type of work that you do. You know, you talked about inner child and stuff like that. But I think a lot of our, <coughs> our community, because mm-hmm. of upbringing are not aware of the different things that we can do and it's funny because if we go back to our ancestry yes we were to tell this to our great great grandparents they'll be like um yeah what are you talking about i i we did this we do this but funny how with the world changing now it seems like whenever you mention things like it's like what is she talking about this is some hoodoo stuff some (laughs) weird wonderful things you know yeah yeah we think like this now and other yeah. communities are benefiting from this, but within our mm. community, we are not using our own power. Could you tell us more about that, please? Going back to your roots. So my my mom and dad, they, they brought us up. I was baptized, so I had a Christian upbringing, but they also had their cultural side. So everything they knew that knew that they knew from their upbringing, from their uh, uh, parents and ancestors before that was passed on from generation to generation. So um, the this, this, this theming like you just mentioned, we were brought up with that too. After my son was born, he I did the steaming you know, to really cleanse from the inside and to tighten everything up again, um, but also bathing with leaves for my own strength to become stronger. So we we live in a Western world, most of us, and we are uh, distanced from that side. And when you look into the holistic side, you're actually pushed to go back to the root. And that means connect with your ancestry. Is it hoodoo? Voodoo, I say it's nature. I say it's nature. It is. It is nature because um, source, God, creator, gave us everything that we need, gave us everything that we need. And people can only help us uh, to the level that they are aware of. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about Western medicine, they had, um, they were learned other things. But if you look back, if you go back to Africa, where did they really know about West, about medicine? That came from there. 
Mm -hmm. So that's why I started looking at Dr. Laila Africa, you know, holistic, African holistic medicine, a great book, you guys, you should really look that up. But I also uh, looked at like Lewis Hayes with mm -hmm. affirmations and self-love. And, you know, she has a whole list of diseases and what affirmations you can use with that disease. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Love so. Yes. Um, I also, you know, I became a Reiki master. Mm -hmm. Then we're going, you know, to the Easter side. Um, so I combined everything and, and I accepted it because I prayed and I asked for help. And I was open to help also on another level. At school, we, we also not only talk about these things, but also about the aura and how the aura has different levels with emotional information, uh, mental information, spiritual, et cetera, the chakras. So there's a lot. I was I was brought up with church. I never deny where I come from because the church has also brought me a lot. Mm -hmm. There I learned how to pray. That was the first, you know, experience that you have with prayer in your home, but also in church. Um, not only that. You grow, so you take everything with you and everything that belongs to you from a place of love stays with you. And then you ask guidance, uh, show me what I, need, what I need to know, lead me to the people where I need to be at. Uh, give, give guidance to the doctors that are going to, uh, you know, operate, have the surgery on me tomorrow. Guide them to be with them. So I wasn't afraid. But, you know, I was brought up with this saying, when you grow, it doesn't matter if it's mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, you always pray that you are guided and protected. Because there are also going to, always going to be energies that will pull you down, try to pull you down. And, you know, guys, those, those lower energies, negative energies, that can be people, places, things, and so much more, the foods, sugar, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we not only have to look at and, and, and then judge people, not only look at what other people are doing, but are, am I being honest to myself? Am I doing the work that needs to be done? Mm -hmm. Am I battling the, 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 the negative energies inside of me? So really look at yourself and be honest to yourself. Am I doing what I, what I need to do to be a better version of me? Yeah. And somebody, a friend of my brother spoke to me today and we were talking about herbs and plants. And um, this is something so beautiful. I'm going to post it too, because he said, Yanta, you know what I noticed? And I don't remember um, if, he, if he read it somewhere or noticed it, but he said, the herbs that you need for a certain moment in your life or plants, if you have a garden, look at what's growing there. Because there is a saying that if you need something, I'm getting goosebumps. If you need something for yourself in your life, it will be given to you by nature. Mm. Wow. Try to look at that for the coming, you know, one or two months and see what is growing in your garden or what is, you know, coming in your, in your dreams or look at the signs, be open to it. Exactly. Everything and give thanks. That we need and that we want is there. It's just a matter of you know, being open to receiving it. And, and I love that because it brings me to a plant that you mentioned and a herb that you mentioned earlier, dandelion, which is yes. like everywhere, everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> it's just yes. a weed and it grows in people's gardens and they don't even, they actually throw it out. They throw but, it out. You know, I, I used to cook with it in Ghana here. I, I make tea from it. Um, yes. So, and, and now I'm nursing, so I'm drinking a lot of um, uh, Moringa tea. Yes, definitely. Um, and, and again, because I was, I was doubting, thinking, oh, you know, I feel like my breast milk uh, is low now. What is going on? And I was looking for all sorts of things. And I thought, hey, wait a second. I have Moringa. Here. Moringa. Yeah, definitely. I have it. So yes. everything that we need is in our reach, but we just have to be open for it. And as you open said, the it. people, the things, the energies, everything that we need, if we're open to it, will be received, will be guided towards them. And I, that's why I don't believe in coincidence. No, definitely not. No such thing as a coincidence. It's just no such thing. 
you know, you know what knowledge is power. And of course, a lot of people have things to say, especially if you have, you know, a, 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 a upbringing linked to your religion and everything. Um, I was blessed with with a family that, you know, supports me and my my parents, they were always, you know, like, OK, you guys do your own thing, discover your own path. They were really open about those things. So I could talk to uh, them about the, the things that I was discovering when I was reading the books, looking at the documentaries on YouTube or any anywhere else. And I would, you know, get back to them. Oh, did you guys know this and this about Africa? And what about these herbs? Or did you guys know that there were, you know, uh, books that were taken out of the Bible where there's so much information, I really started to not read things, but go in it. Mm. And I can give you a small example about, you know, the Bible. Okay. They had talking about King Solomon. Who is this king? And what was he doing? And why did he build this temple? And who was that Queen Sheba that he was with, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I was also looking at the chakras. Okay, what are these chakras about? And what is that chakra? What is that linked to? So I just went deeper into everything. And knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the thing that I really realized is, okay, what happened before these books? Why was, what was happening in Egypt? Why were those people, you know, doing the things that they were doing? Why did they have so much knowledge? Mm. And then, uh, and, and other, you know, Kush. Mm. We can go on. What happened in India? What happened in the States? And it's happening in the world. Who are we? Where are we going? Where did we come from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back to the roots, which is the name of your company. Going back to the roots. Holistic. Roots Holistic Therapy. Yeah. My father had a foundation to help people mm -hmm. in Suriname. That's where the uh, name came from, Roots. It was called Lutu, which is a Sarama it's a dialogue, uh, in um, a dialect, sorry, in Suriname, Saramekan, which means roots. Mm -hmm. And uh, he passed away a few years ago. And I was with my mom and we were talking about, you know, the school and everything and which direction I was going. And then it came to me, Roots. And I just claimed that. And guys, from that moment on, I didn't know it back then, but I was being prepared for what I'm doing now. Exactly, exactly. And aren't we grateful that you have been, you know, directed in this, uh, in this, you know, in this way, this path, because you're able to help so, so many women. And we really, um, you know, I, I enjoyed this conversation so much. Um, before we wrap up, I don't know if there are any more questions, ladies, whether it's about endometriosis or just holistic therapies in general, or just some of the things that we were mentioning here about opening ourselves to knowledge beyond what we have been given. Um, yes. And also claiming things to be of our own and not saying, oh, this is for white people. This is for Indian people. No, because this I help everyone. Human. I help everyone. And when you look at, when you do this work, holistic work, you look at under the conditioning. Who are you under everything that was told to you? Yeah. I, I help people. Before you're, exactly. before you're black, a mother, a wife, a black, exactly. you know, a, a role. Whatever. Yeah. You are human. And exactly. as human, you are energy. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. To the core of it, you're just energy. And energy is in everything. So the energy in a stone or in the air or in the sea you are energy a piece of what is in you is in that thing as well and yes it is so much easier when you think like that to connect with other people but also with things with nature and embrace it more and not see ourselves as disconnected but more connected beings um oh i love where you know yeah this conversation is going i could talk for hours yes could, yeah tell us a bit about what kind of um services do you offer how can we yes. work with you? what are the specific things that you specialize in yes, so i specialize in the womb healing of course <laughs> So we really, it's a really long session, the womb healing session. I really take the time. So it's two to four hours. What I learned, you know, when I was depressed and I was stuck and I didn't get the help that was needed on that level um, is that, you know, going to therapy is usually one hour. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you might go the next week or the week after that. And I really wanted to combine therapy with healing. So that's what the womb healing is about with the focus on the womb, but also 
what is stored in the womb? What are the emotions? What is the trauma that the womb is holding on to? Uh, what are you stuck in in your life? So it's a really deep session. I also have the back to your root session, which is um, going back to the root, of course. And really, I take everything in that. So all all, all uh, sessions are holistically, so um, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, and also uh, physical. What are the blockages? And the blockages are all, uh, if every, everything that needs to be removed on that moment will be removed. Uh, next to that, I do ceremonies for the womb healing. Uh, that's individual or in group. I do uh, cacao uh, ceremonies. Uh, cacao is an aphrodisiac, is, is, is a heart opener. It has a lot of um, vitamin minerals for us, for our body. Um, when you drink cacao and combine it with uh, sound healing, like I do, it, it really opens everything up. And it's been used for thousands of years, thousands of years. Uh, next to that, I also do plant medicine ceremonies, which is also a huge um, a point in my uh, healing journey. Um, the specific plant that I use is San Pedro, it's also known as Huachuma. Mm. And um, we drink the San Pedro and it brings you back to uh, traumas that you were holding on to blockages. It shows you uh, what the journey of your life is really about. And it's a really masculine energy. The journey can take up from eight up to 15 hours. So you will be guided by myself and my team. Uh, guys, a lot of people have gone upwards after joining a plant medicine ceremony. Mm -hmm. um, we are really busy right now for the coming uh, period. So um, it's, a, it's really deep, masculine. And after the ceremony, you just feel um, enlightened. It, it connects you with all that there is and the integration of the plant medicine, it can take up to months. So it's not only what you experience during a ceremony that goes for all of my sessions actually, but also what doors are you opening and what are the signs that you're getting after that? Yeah. Uh, I also uh, do truffle ceremonies. So truffles are legal in, uh, in Holland. Mm -hmm. So we combine that uh, ceremonial. So really with music, with intention, with prayer, and also something that has been around for thousands of years. Next to that, I also do retreats in Holland um, and also abroad. So the retreats are about connecting with who you are, uh, sound healing, Reiki, meditation within a group of like-minded people. And um, you always see with the, the ceremonies and the retreats, if there, if there are more people um, that are joining, you guys are always connected, always connected. There's always a reason why these people come together. And even with plant medicine, that people find out that they were brothers in past lives. Wow. It goes deep and it shows you the roots. And I'm not talking about slavery going back that no, thousands of years before that, kings and queens energy. This is who you are. This is where your lineage comes from. Go stand in that power. It goes really, really deep. And it also, you know, releases what needs to be released on a very deep level. It can even show you the traumas of your parents that they were carrying. Mm -hmm. Oh, and God, we know they have a lot of traumas. Yes. I mean, they do. They do. Mm -hmm. Next to that, the Reiki, of course, mm -hmm. uh, um, healing and my practice, but also distance. Like you said, everything is energy. So I can tune in into your energy and remove the blockages holistically uh, that I feel at that moment and then balance you all out. Some people come just for, you know, just relaxing and, and letting everything go, being at ease. And some people just are just like, okay, just do what needs to be done. And then it comes out, it comes out. So everything comes out that, that needs to come out. And again, you heal until you journey on you now have a choice to heal from love instead of the pain. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Who's oh. <laughs> I love this. I love, I love this. So much going on, ladies. If this is the first time you're joining, whether live or watching the replay and you don't know about She Train, you're like, ooh, I love this session. I want more of this and I want more of Yanta. Roots Holistic Therapies um, in the replay and in all the details, I will share her, her details. Please go ahead and share it in the chat if you want, Bianca, your 
Instagram handle, your website as well, so the ladies can take it. Uh, I know there's yes. a special offer for the She Tribe community, if you could talk a little bit more about that. Um, yes. Um, yeah, so go ahead and then I will wrap up. Okay, great. So we have a special offer. So to get, you guys get 10% discount on, uh, I was thinking about the Reiki distance. It depends on where you live. So if you live, you know, in another country, you can you can use the, the, the discount for the Reiki distance uh, session. Um, so you get a 10% discount on that. If you live uh, in Holland or you're nearby, Belgium, I don't know what the rules are now with COVID there, but if you are able to come, um, the 10% discount is also for the womb healing uh, next to the Reiki. So if you feel that, you know, you want a womb healing session and you live in Holland or nearby, 10% 10 discount is also on that. So it goes for the Reiki distance. Um, for people that don't live here, the Reiki um, at my practice, also 10% discount, and the womb heal session, also a 10% discount. Mm -hmm. Not only that, I forgot one, uh, one more thing that I do offer, and that is spiritual house cleansing. Mm -hmm. So what happens there is that I cleanse the house or the company on a spiritual level, and it doesn't mean that it's only, you know, with sage, we walk through the house and then done. That's something that everyone can do. Um, but we really go in the house and look at all the corners, go into all the corners, and then we feel what energies are inside of the house. What is the history of the house that is still there, that is still present? What are the energies that haven't journeyed on, are still stuck there? And we do re uh, remove those energies so the house is fully cleansed. And, you know, just look at one you know one one day and feel what's going on inside of your house look at how your children are reacting to certain corners in your house um how are you feeling when you are you know opening a closet or mm -hmm. looking under a bed really tune in and see what's going on i love that i love that i wanted to quickly ask what if someone has more question about your services do you do discovery calls maybe they're like i want to work with you but i'm not quite sure what definitely Will be definitely yes they get a discovery call with you do you have a calendly or like a equity link or you know any way they can access your calendar so they can book a discovery call maybe half an hour or 10 15 minutes with you. yes you can contact me on um instagram at moment my email address info at rootsholistictherapy.com mm -hmm. um, and everything that you will you want to book i always do a, a, a call with max 30 minutes mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what kind of session you book with me mm -hmm. so that you get a feeling about who i am and i get a feeling about who you are and how i can help you okay great well thank you so much for sharing your you're story. welcome you for sharing all these wonderful um, tips and how we can learn more about our you know our our roots and also um heal ourselves uh, as I was saying, if you don't know me and you came in late or, you know, you're watching this replay or whatever, my name is Rosemary. I just go by Rose. I'm the founder of She Tribe. And She Tribe is a community for um, women of color, specifically Black women all over the world, trying to help you to live a happier, healthier, more successful life. Um, this Q&A is part of a series that we do. So every month we have a masterclass with an expert and Deonta here was our expert of the month, blessing us with her knowledge as we were in the um, endometriosis awareness month. Um, so every month we have a masterclass and then we end the month with a Q&A with that expert to get to know their work a bit more. Um, some of the benefits are, you know, discounts on our yearly retreats. One is coming up. Uh, sales are opening soon for our retreats uh, to Ghana. So every year we have Ooh. a retreat in Africa. <laughs> Uh, we've postponed this year's one, so it's normally early March, um, February, end of February, early March. This year we postponed it due to COVID and also mama had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so it will be uh, around the end of the year, but sales are opening up for that. And yeah, there's so much going on. So we have coaching uh, as part of the membership and other group programs. So feel free to check us out at www.shetriconnect.com. Connect with us on uh, Instagram at SheTribeConnect.com and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for joining. I think someone left here. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll talk to you soon, ladies.
Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>